A giant green fatty with a brand new mechanic has just appeared. What a fantastic way to end the year. <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here for a Kaldheim spoiler of epic proportions because not only is it a gigantic epic mythic green boy but we also finally get to learn what the foretell mechanic is so with no further ado let us go ahead and take a look at this brand new card that i instantly fell in love with this one is called battle mammoth a pretty straightforward name honestly sounds like something you would call a throwaway common if i'm being real but this is no throwaway co this ain't your daddy's common card anyways two green and three for a 6-5 trampler, already making my boy Crawworm from back in the day look like a piece of trash, but whatever. I mean, Crawworm's been severely outclassed. Either way, Mythic Rare, 5 mana, 6-5 trample. Also, whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability the opponent controls, you may draw a card. That right there is a fantastic ability. I love the fact that it says any permanent doesn't just have to be a creature. They want to destroy your enchantments. They want to mess with your lands. They want to do any of that with spells or abilities. They got to pay that that troll toll and give you the give you the bonus card. I definitely dig that. It will make people second guess destroying some permanents. And when they have no choice but to take out the bigger permanents, you're going to score. The fact that the battle mammoth will end up replacing itself is pretty sweet. You know, if somebody goes and I'll just use a destruction spell on that, boom replaces. That's good times. Now, the foretell ability, though, is where this gets really interesting, because ever since we saw it somewhat pseudo-spoiled earlier, I've wanted to know what this ability was. I had a theory about it, but it turns out that foretell works like this. It's two green and two specifically for this battle mammoth. That's its foretell cost. It's going to work kind of like morph. I'll show you a morph creature in a bit so that we can talk about that. But anyways, it's four mana for a four telecost. The rules text says, during your turn, you may pay two mana and exile this card from your hand face down. Cast it on a later turn for its four telecost. It's interesting to note that you can't use it on the same turn. I guess they wanted to give it that sort of like looking forward flavor, right? It's not really foretelling. It's like if I foretell that you're about to get smacked in the mouth and then like I just go boonk. It's like that's not really foretelling. I mean, if you want to get really technical, I predicted the future. It's like eh, not so much. So the foretell works in a way where you have to at least wait a turn, but it keeps things secret. And I really like this. Now, this is a leaked card, but if we take a look at Ranar the Ever Watchful, which is something we already absolutely know about. That's where we actually found out about Foretell originally. Ranar the Ever Watchful is a blue, white, and two for a two, three flyer with vigilance. The first card you foretell each turn costs zero to foretell. So basically, the way that that works is, I mean, actually, I'm, I will admit, I'm, I'm a little bit thrown off by it. Does that mean that it costs less to like actually play it from the foretell area or does that reduce the foretelling two to zero i assume it makes the spell zero to put over to the side but it could turn out that it makes the spell just either does it does it count as foretelling both times right like when you activate it and put it off to the side that's foretelling and when you pay its foretell cast that is also foretelling i mean i guess i i'm not i'm not 100 sure i feel like to balance this card, it's going to be that it just makes the two you would spend to foretell the card off to the side. That's what it reduces to zero, but I could be wrong. The reason I'm showing you this is just to illustrate the fact that we know foretell is definitely a mechanic in Magic the Gathering now. It's on an established card we know about, and that lends legitimacy to the Battle Mammoth. So, returning to the Battle Mammoth, the idea behind it where you can take this gigantic creature, pay two mana, put it off to the side, it accomplishes a couple of things. First of all, it lets you protect cards from discard, right? If it's in the foretell area, like if I exile this, boom, put it off to the side, you can't do anything to it unless you have a card that specifically targets things that have been exiled. So you can no longer make me 
discard it from my hand. It also no longer counts towards my hand total, right? Like if you have it out, put it off to the side, it's not counting against my hand total anymore, which is something I keep butting up against when I play my green tower online, because I'll end up drawing a bunch of cards off of like, uh, wild speaker returns or whatever where it's like draw cards equal to the power of your biggest creature and i'm like draw like nine cards and i'm sitting there go i'm gonna have to discard so foretell lets you put those spells off in reserve but more importantly it has that whole surprise douchebag maneuver to it which i absolutely love where it's like didn't see this coming did you buddy you did not know what this was gonna be so it, i mentioned morph previously because this harkens back to morph right so i'm going to show you an old school morph card that will also give you an idea of the level of power increase we've seen over the years. So we're gonna look at Croson Colossus. This is three green and six for a nine nine that has a morph cost of eight. Two green and six to morph it. So how does morph work? Basically it lets you play any permanent that has morph face down as a 2-2 creature. It costs three mana, and that's just like a 2-2 creature with no creature type, no abilities. It's a generic bear at that point, essentially, right? But the idea is supposed to be like, you can surprise your opponents with it. Now, some morph creatures had abilities that would trigger when you turn them face up, and other creatures are just just gigantic problems when you turn them up, like the Kroos and Colossus. Like, imagine I attacked you with a, a few different morphs. You don't know which one to block, right? So if you can't block them all, you're like, okay, I'll choose to block this one. Oops, my Kroos and, my Kroos and Colossus is coming on through. Pay the morph cost, flip it up. All of a sudden, instead of a 2-2, you've got a 9-9 barreling down the tracks at you, right? So morph had this, like, surprise maneuver. And I really like that. I like the whole kind of bluffing aspect of it that goes along with it. Depending on how much you use of a morph or foretell style ability, you can really add essentially decision anxiety to your opponent by going, you don't know what I have over here, but you know I've got something. It has to be one of these possibilities. I mean, it's gonna matter as well how many cards have the foretell mechanic on them too, because if you don't have very many foretell cards, that does remove some of the mystery. But for me, I really like mystery cards. And since we're talking about old school mystery, like hard to figure out what, what kind of scenarios, I do want to take a moment to touch on camouflage because this is one of the craziest cards with its new wording now that had, like this is one of the original surprise, you don't know what's coming maneuver cards. There's also at least one other, but we'll talk, we'll talk about that another time. So camouflage is specifically green. It's a one green instant. It says you may rearrange your attacking creatures and place them face down, revealing which is which is which only after defense is chosen. If this results in impossible blocks, such as non-flying creatures blocking flying creatures, illegal blockers cannot block this turn. So the idea behind this is actually really simple. Turn all of your attacking creatures face down and then move them around, shuffle them all up so your opponent doesn't know what they are. Now, admittedly, in the old school days of Magic, we didn't play with sleeves and stuff like that, so you could you could end up with like noticeable wear patterns on the back of cards that would allow opponents to be like, hey, I know that's your force of nature, I'm gonna block that one. It's like, oh, come on, man, he's supposed to be camouflaged. It didn't really work that way um, once sleeves came into play and people started not letting their magic cards get, once the magic cards became the, oh, let me hold it up to the light. Has anybody even breathed on this card? It's not near me, you know, like <laughs> that's the mentality that we have now. But back in the day, it worked differently. So camouflage has some of the craziest Oracle wording update. Like I wanna read this word salad to you, my friends, because it blew my mind when I went red. It said, cast this spell only during your declare attacker step. This turn, instead of declaring blockers, each defending player chooses any number of creatures they control and divides them into a number of piles equal to the number of attacking creatures for whom that player is the defending player. Creatures those players control that can block additional creatures may likewise be put into additional piles. Assign each pile to a different one of those attacking creatures at random. Each creature in a pile that can block the creature that that pile is assigned to does so. Piles can be empty, is the reminder text. And my brain just goes, oh, 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 that wording is so nutty. Like literally you sit there and go, okay, everybody who's a defending player, you now have to divide up all your defenders into different piles. It actually almost, there, there's an old school enchantment in magic that makes you divide your creatures into different piles 
that they can block based on, but that's only two piles. This is like pile, pile, pile. You can have empty piles. And then it's all just random. So ultimately what this actually does is it does do a better job of what the camouflage card was originally intending to do, right? Where it's like, okay, I wanna be able to swing with my guys. You don't know who they are. And then I can just kind of like, oh, now you're blocking wrong and whatever. And illegal blocks can't happen. But the, the new version creates the randomized effect, right? The new wording, I should say, not the new version, but it creates a specifically randomized effect where there's no way for anybody to game the system. And it really does make each creature indistinguishable from the others, which is the idea behind it. Now, I do want to point out, and I never really noticed this until today, that the camouflage art is hilarious in that it really doesn't feel like camouflage. Like, look at the artwork. That's like an orc, right? That's like an orc or some kind of horned beast. Like, it's clearly the outline of an orc in armor. Like, if, if all camouflage does is make a misty version of you, and but you look the same shape, like, imagine if all, everybody in your family just pick, I want you to picture your family. Now picture them all as camouflage versions like this, where they're smoky. You're still going to know who's who. They're still going to have the same distinct outline from their haircut, whatever clothing they're wearing, the way that they stand, their height, their weight, all of these different factors are still going to be very evident, which makes camouflage's artwork hilarious, unless it makes everybody just look like a misty orc boy, which is not the vibe that it gives me. So it's kind of funny that this spell would be undone by any mage with a brain. I don't need to counter your magic. I can tell that's an elephant because it's a giant misty elephant. And I can tell that's a goat because it's a misty goat. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I just, I thought that was funny. So returning to the battle mammoth itself, since that is the focus of the video here, overall, this is a very potent card, but it also speaks to how powerful mythics have become because I feel like I feel like this could be a rare. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that if they made this a rare that we would really blink twice at it that much. It would certainly feel like a powerful rare, but this like, the what I'm trying to say is the power level of Mythics has gone so up through the roof that this kind of a card doesn't feel as splashy, although it's going to turn out to be incredibly efficient, right? Five mana for a six five trampler that if your opponent handles it with either a spell or ability, which, I, unless it's like a board wiping wrath or something like that, anything that targets is going to replace the card. So you're not even gonna end up behind. So it could be honestly that I'm like underrating the card's power level a little when I look at it and go, eh, is this the hypest mythic? I mean, for all I know, especially with the cards surrounding it, this could turn out to be a lot more powerful than I like originally perceived. And even with the four tell cost, like you pay two mana to put it aside and then you pay four mana to actually cast it from that side zone on, an, on like one of your future turns. So you're paying six mana, but it also lets you accelerate this, right? Because you could foretell this on the second turn and drop it on the fourth, Never mind. Okay, I see it now. I see the mythic power. Fourth turn, fourth turn, six, five trampler, Maybe even faster if you have mana acceleration like Golden Goose and, oh, third turn. Okay, um, yes, a re revised appraisal. This card is absolutely insane. You can power it out really quickly. It replaces itself. I mean, it, uh, th thankfully it doesn't have any kind of um, evasion abilities or an untarget ability sort of issue where it's like, hey, look at me. I've got hex proof too, because this card is, very bonkers. At first, I was more interested in the flavor behind it, right? Oh, it connects to this, it connects to this. But ultimately, breaking down mathematically how this thing's going to work, put it to the side on first turn goose, second turn, put it to the side, third turn, foretell this out, as long as you hit your land drops. That is incredibly powerful. The artwork is perfectly fine. I'll admit, like, it doesn't super excite me in terms of it feels the name and the artwork feel like they go together pretty generic overall, right? You've got a you've got an elephant with a whole bunch of crazy tusks. There are these gigantic stone pillars. They're actually the most interesting part of the artwork to me is the giant stone pillars. And you can see all these dudes being flung up in the air. So this is a mammoth that has been trained for combat and knows to crush people and fling them about and break them like ragdolls. 
which is some pretty intense flavor, but I do, I'm gonna be direct and say, the artwork does not fire up my imagination. It's not exciting. It's obviously done by somebody who is an expert painter, following direction they're given. But unlike other magic artwork, this one just goes, okay, that's cool. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So that's really all I have to say about the card, my friends. Thanks for coming by. Big thank you to all of my patrons for supporting my channel. And I'll leave a link up to a magic lore video for you guys to enjoy. See you next time.